Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today marks Korean National Foundation Day. 4,350 years ago, a new country named Go Joseon was born in the Korean Peninsula. Go Joseon means the country of a morning calm. As its name reflects, Korea has had a history of peace and tranquility, with the exception when it was invaded. Since the Second World War, Korea has been divided into two countries of Communist North and Democratic South. Today, the area is one of the most dangerous areas in the world. Mr. Speaker, despite the current situation in the Korean Peninsula, I could honestly say that the Korean people are peace-loving and very industrious people. The hardworking Koreans that immigrate to Ontario have contributed immensely to the economic prosperity, cultural diversity, and the higher education of this great province. I would say that their contribution has been immeasurable. Mr. Speaker, as a Korean Canadian, I'm very proud to stand in this chamber to make this statement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Do you remember the statement? The member from Windsor to come see. Speaker, you can tell by looking at me, I haven't missed too many meals. I'm one of the lucky ones across this province. The people who run Ontario's food banks say the demand for food is on the rise. In my area, the Unemployed Help Centre is the hub for 15 food banks in Windsor and Essex County. They average 125,000 visits from hungry clients each year. Those who need it most and those earning a poverty wage come in once a month. Clients also get fresh produce each week from the Plentiful Harvest Program, tomatoes, cubes, and peppers, for example. Since 2012, we've rescued 11 million pounds of good nutritional food, some of which ends up in soups and stews that are frozen and distributed later. Other parts of the province aren't as fortunate, so the Windsor produce is shared with other food banks. Speaker, more than 300,000 people in Ontario couldn't get by without the support they receive from our food bank network. The demand is growing in Toronto alone. The number of seniors coming to the food banks is up by 27 percent. People are skipping meals because they need the money to pay their rent, their hydro, or to buy their prescription medication. 34 percent say they go hungry at least once a week. 14 percent of those going hungry are children. Some food banks are running out of food because of the increased demand. Speaker, we're heading into the Thanksgiving weekend. It's a good time to think about the less fortunate. It's a good time to make a donation to a food bank of your choice. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise today as the member for Trinity Spadina to congratulate Shia on the occasion of the official opening of their Canadian headquarters in my riding. This leading biotechnology company has chosen Toronto as their home, where they are close to our health researchers, academic hospitals, uh, with which they will collaborate, innovate, and help Canadians live healthier lives. Shai is a global leader in cure rare diseases, diseases and other highly specialized conditions. This company was named the Farmer Company of the Year and has a reputation for providing top quality products. Success stories are always welcome in Ontario, and Shire can help our community by growing our economy. Research, innovation, and growth are something we, all, we can all celebrate. Shire's downtown location will help shape Trinity Spadina's research and healthcare community. These jobs will attract top quality talent and grow our area. I encourage my, my colleagues to join me in welcoming Shire to my riding I know there will be a productive and valued business in my riding. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. I rise to celebrate Dean Humble, who retired last month from the Brockville Paratransit Service. 
he launched 35 years ago. Like any quiet hero, Dean wasn't expecting fanfare when he put his bus in park for the final time. But when your career has literally opened the doors of our community to the disabled, it's impossible to slip away quietly. I became mayor in Brockville in 1982 when Dean, who had spent 18 years as a city police officer, started paratransit. So I know firsthand it was more than a business to this trailblazer of accessibility. For Dean, ensuring all citizens could fully participate in their community was the right thing to do. And over the next 35 years, Dean became an advocate and champion for equality for access. His rider speaker weren't his clients, they were his family. He shoveled their walkways. He waited for them at their doctor's appointments. He became a friend to those whose lives were changed because they finally felt included. There were countless heartfelt tributes to Dean at a retirement party in his honour recently. On social media, people recalled fond memories of Dean teaching Elmer the Safety Elephant courses in public school, or how he was such a patient high school driver's ed instructor. It tells you everything you need to know about Dean's incredible personal character that those brief encounters decades ago are still recalled with such, fond, uh, with such fondness. Speaker, I want to ask all Ontarians to join me in congratulating this humble hero. His good deeds never went unnoticed, and they'll never be forgotten. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from... Well, Mr. Speaker, this House last year passed a le piece of legislation that I think was monumental, and it would have been something that had been so great. We were going to first, for the first time in the history of this country, create a couple of ridings in Northern Ontario that would give us an opportunity to have First Nations elect their own to be here at the Legislature at Queen's Park. By creating ridings, one or two of them in the far north, where they would be in a majority so that they would have a better chance of being able to elect their own. Imagine this house where we would have two people from north, far northern Ontario who were able to represent the Indigenous people of this province on committee, in cabinet, in this house, in the halls, in the meetings, to be able to inform us on the issues that we need to move on. Unfortunately, what has come back to this house by way of the Commission is a riding in the northwest that somewhat does that, but a riding in the northeast that calls the riding Meshkegawak, but is not by any stretch of the imagination one where First Nations will get elected by majority because they actually are only about 10 percent of the riding that is being created. This, committee, this House has decided to send a committee to Kenora and Moose Factory next week. We will have a chance to listen to the people of the Meshkegawak in regards to what they want. And let's hope that at the end of that process, we're able to see within our hearts this is a real chance for us to do reconciliation and to change the legislation and amend it so that we finally can have ridings where people of the far north, First Nations people, Cree and Meshkegawak, are able to elect their own to come into this legislature so they can better represent the issues that are important to them directly. Thank the member from Simmons, James Bay, which I didn't get a chance to say before he was enthusiastic about his speech. Uh, there you go. Uh, further, further member, the member from Mississauga, Arendelle. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know you are forgetting, but this year, on October 19th, Ontario will witness many celebrations and events organized by the South Asian community to commemorate Diwali. Diwali is celebrated by people of different faiths. Some celebrate the festival due to religious observance, some for spiritual significance, and others for historical reasons. It is a festival that is celebrated by multi-religious contingent, which is exemplary of the Canadian values and freedom of religion, multiculturalism, and unity. Diwali is fondly known as the Festival of Lights, a fitting title as the festival represents the triumph of light over darkness, and the celebrations consist of a multitude of colors and fireworks. Mr. Speaker, as family and friends come together to celebrate Diwali, it is important to be thankful for all the blessings that have been enriched our lives. This year's Diwali celebration in Canada also coincides with the introduction of a Canada Post stamp, which honors the Diwali festival. I would like to say thank you to Canada Post and India Post in combining their efforts in the creation of a stamp for Diwali. It is an important symbol of respect to the wider South Asian community 
which has for generations contributed, contributed to the fabrics of Canadian society. I will also like to extend my very best wishes to everyone celebrating Diwali in Ontario and around the world. Happy Diwali. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, students, the members from Melbourne, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm proud to celebrate provincial championships won by two St. Thomas minor baseball teams. Congratulations, St. Thomas Cardinals major peewee team and the St. Thomas Cardinals major rookie team on winning the Ontario Association's provincial championships. St. Thomas Cardinals major peewee team is led by coach Dave Bolt, Sean Rivard, Dan Groves, Richard Van Leer, and Edward Jordan. We're second out of 13 teams in a regular season and we're runner up in four tournaments. Their season record was 39 14 and 1, and they won the OBA B Provincial Championships in Le Leamington on Labor Day weekend. Their team members were Evan Bolt, Aidan Rivard, Jackson Groves, Cody Van Leer, Patrick Berkmans, Junior Coleman, Carson Dietrich, Adam Fry, Ryan Hine. Carmen, Cameron Niles, Eric Oaks, William Richardson, Cregan O'Connor. The St. Thomas Cardinals major rookie team is led by Daniel Leonards, Ryan Morrison, Wade Bergeron, and Tom Watson. This team shut down Northumberland in the final game by not allowing a single run after the first inning and won the championship 9-4. Their team members are Taven Barn, Colton Bergeron, Hayden Burroughs, Chase Cameron, Cooper Henderson, Caden Leonards, Cameron Morrison, Luke Ordronu, Luke Thomas, Parker Vaughn, Nathan Watson, Zephyr Hatch. Thanks and congratulations to this team on great teamwork and a desire to play and to be the best they can. They deserve this championship. Thank you very much, Speaker. Got them, got them all in. Further, further, member, further member's statement. The member from St. Catharines, Chief Government. The latest round of cuts of frontline staff at the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority has caused justifiable alarm among environment groups and, indeed, thousands of people in the Niagara-Hamilton region who wish to see our natural heritage and the environment protected by this agency. Members of the Trout Unlimited Canada, the Welland River Keepers and the Burt Miller Nature Club are among concerned residents in our area who believe that the NPCA appears to be abandoning an important role that has traditionally played in years gone by. Absolutely. Local MPPs have heard from the, their constituents concerns about controversial land deals, questionable contracts and hiring practices, a new development-friendly philosophy, workplace harassment, and bullying of any who dare to question or criticize those in charge of the NPCA through legal action or retribution practices. Constituents are saying that as the NPCA loses long-time dedicated employees through firings and resignations brought on by stress and discouragement, and silences its critics with acts of intimidation and retribution with what some claim to be slap suits, the environment and public participation will be the losers. There is much evidence to justify the concerns expressed by local constituents who hope, as I do, that the MPCA returns to its respected and envied roots. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I am happy to announce from October 13th to the 15th, the Town of Blythe, a real-life room of requirement for this event, will transform for a much-anticipated Harry Potter and the Transfigured Town event. While you may not be a wizard like Harry Potter, you can still experience the magic of his wizarding world. And it's important to note that you may just recognize Harry Potter and Blythe. He's being played by Grayson, who served us as a page before the summer break. Whether you are a Gryffindor, a Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, or Slytherin, this is an opportunity to put on your capes, grab your broomsticks, and fly over to Blythe. The weekend event may not be the Quidditch World Cup, but there are still plenty of exciting events that will be taking place, including Quidditch tournaments, a musical performance by Draco and the Malfoys, as well as Slughorn's VIP dinner. By attending this year's Harry Potter Festival, you will solemnly swear that you will be up to some good, as the proceeds from this three-day festival will be donated to the charities such as the food, Huron Food Action Network. And don't forget, when the weekend's over, just say, mischief managed. Thank you very much, Speaker. I thank all members for their, their statements. The